Hello everyone, uh, this is my explanation video for the submission uh, for module off and the Node.js challenge uh, where we have to make something using the Node.js integration module with Drupal. Just briefly, my name's Alexander Repack and I'm a developer at Left Click Advanced in Northampton, Massachusetts. So uh, this was not really required to do anything specific and I really like that about this challenge. So I've always envied uh, Google Analytics and their real-time. So I just want to show you, if you aren't aware of what that is. Um, so like for my live site, my portfolio site, I can go to real-time overview. And if people are visiting the site, it'll show it on here live. And it has like a little thing here. So let me just hit that. URL. Okay, so there should be something over here relatively soon. You see that there's an axis there, and eventually it'll populate this map down here with a dot. There it is saying, Here I am in West Springfield. This is the page I accessed, and there's a chart. So I really envy this, and I think it's great. But, um, you know, why not try and make my own version? So I thought, okay, this is a great challenge. I can just use Node.js integration and have Drupal tell me right inside Drupal uh, who's accessing what and uh, have it just happen instantaneously without needing any Ajax polling happening or page refresh. You don't need any of that. So let's go back. All right, so that's the overview. Let me go into... Um, the actual demo. I'm going to show you what you're, what we're going to essentially be building with code um, briefly. So I have a demo page which is uh, linked in the repo that I'll show you after this. Um, it's nojsaccesslog.alexdoesit.com, and there's a link to the menu item. It shows you everything that's happening. So if I just click on that, um, here's just a simple menu menu item with a, a tab for settings uh, we got requests over time so this is a line chart a little bit different than Google we've got uh, a map kind of map uh, geo I, I have no idea it's it's the it's the data mode um, markers instead of regions so it's not an intensity map it's a it puts markers on the map and then just a simple table at the bottom listing out the path uh, the period and the user that did the uh, request. And let's just bop over to settings for a minute. Settings is pretty simple. I only have logging period in here, so you can group these on the line chart by um, periods of one minute, five minutes, or 15 minutes. Um, and because Google Chart doesn't really handle, uh, handle, um, handle like a lot of items in the series very well then I just uh, limited to that to nine items in the series so it'll if it goes to one one seventeen then it'll bump the last one off alright so let's jump over to code briefly simple module um, I should just jump into the info file so you guys can see what's going on of course, it's for seven. Uh, it requires Node.js and working Node.js server. Um, it requires visualization module, which uh, is how those Google charts are made. And host IP, there's a lot of different um, modules out there that will take your IP and figure out um, what your location is. It, some give you country code, some give you latitude, longitude. Uh, this one is the one I found with the least amount of bugs. Actually, I had to, I did had to fix something on it to get it working. Um, and then the configuration page, like I showed you earlier. So jump into the module file. All right. So menu items. So you should be familiar with those. Uh, we got the main default, uh, which is the view of those three different ways you can see requests coming in, um, and then the settings tab. I have a permission here, and this permission is meant for people who are going to see those uh, requests coming through, so really it should be like for an admin. Um, 
and then just some convenience functions here. Uh, don't need to worry about those. Um, and then this is the page callback for uh, admin reports access log, which is that main page that you saw. Uh, the visualization module is pretty nice. It provides themes, so we could just build these little render arrays, one for the um, line chart and one for the map. And we can make the table pretty easy. Uh, I made sure that the links were target blank because this page doesn't store data. Uh, so if you refresh, all of your previous accesses that you've logged are gone. And I think that's fine because uh, I think Google does store for like five minutes, but I don't see the big benefit. You, you kind of just want to see what's happening. So say you like sent out a e-blast right, right now, and you wanted to see how hard your site was getting hit. This might be a good way to do that. And we just return them as a nice render, render array. Uh, and here's where the magic happens. Init function, I know this won't work all the time, especially if like caching is turned on. This is this is not the best way to do it, but it's a good example, and it shows you how it works pretty easily. Um, so basically, we're only adding in the JavaScript that Node is gonna um, that Node is gonna do with the callbacks for people who are going to need the callbacks and if it's on the right page. So ignore that for now. I'll show you the JavaScript in a moment. Um, but the magic happens with broadcasting the message. Uh, so here I've got a channel specified and you can pass in all kinds of arbitrary data. So here I have the link that it accessed, the period that it was in, the user that did it, and the country information. And then I have a callback specified. So note that I have a channel and a callback specified. And then uh, just node.js send message is pretty simple to do. And uh, finally, the uh, user channels uh, hook is pretty important. It uh, makes sure that there's people in the channel. And there's actually an issue if you if you look up here. This uh, that needs to be solved. So uh, it apparently it's some issue with socket I/O version. I don't know what. But there's a um, there's a uh, function in the class Node.js that uh, this integration module has, and it's to get uh, the ch the users of a channel. So basically, we should be checking if there are users in a channel before um, before emitting this message, because if there aren't, then Node is going to get errors, and it does. But as long as someone is on that uh, admin page, then you should be fine. Okay, I'm breezing through this pretty fast. But the last part is the JavaScript. It's pretty well commented, but I'm gonna just go through it quickly anyways. Um, bad stuff going on here. I'm looping through all the charts on a page. I'm not using IDs, and there is a flash uh, when you when you do when you do access the URL. Um, okay, so the way Node works is it does callbacks so if your socket IO connection has um, a channel and it uh, is a channel that you own then it's gonna go through all callbacks and it's gonna pass in channels so node calls these callbacks when the socket IO gets a request sent to it and it comes back to the browser so we need to make sure we target the channel because some messages can can be set to broadcast which will go to all channels. Uh, so we need to check for that. And, uh, and and we did specify callback in the message if you recall uh, so that way only this callback is being called not all callbacks and that this channel is being used not all channels. So kind of like a dual specificity going on there. So yeah we just looked through each chart. Um, the visualization module didn't really provide a way to re-render charts after page load. Uh, that'd be cool if there was a behavior there, but there's not. So we kind of had to fudge our way through rebuilding them. And I just have some flags here. It's kind of hard to tell what kind of chart you're on with this Google uh, Visualization API, but it was pretty easy if you could like 
tell based on the first element in the data array if it had like because the first element in the data array has the uh, the uh, axis labels so you could pretty much tell by that and uh, what's the other thing I uh, down here we've got uh, yeah like I said we limit how many elements are in the series on the line chart because it, it gets a little funny if it exceeds that width of the page so I just left it at that it'll bump off the last one because it's old and we no longer need it but the uh, the map and the table will continue to accrue those results anyways so that's different um, and if uh, yeah, up here also, um, since we're grouping by periods, uh, just do a simple check to see if a period exists. Um, add in, just increment the value saying that, okay, we've we've already seen this period. Uh, just bump up the request because we've had two requests, say, in minute one, two, two. All right, and then down here, uh, this is stolen from... The visualization module it basically will do the rows in in such a way that when we hit this it will make it pretty and then the last bit is uh the table uh there's there is an ajax sub module for node.js that probably would do this better but it was a quick hack to add a row to the table so that is my module overall and for a second, I'd just like to pop back over. Uh, so we see we only generated one request um, at minute or at 1 a.m. and 14 minutes. So if I just open like structure in a new tab, you see now that we have a request at 123 and it found a different location, probably a rounding error. And you can see the table down here has these guys. And if I go crazy and open up a million tabs. You can see that gets a little hairy, but there they are. There's all the nodes. And you can see the requests have significantly increased. Our eblast is doing very well. Okay. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, I just want to thank Mike Caden for having this uh, this great competition. I think it's really good. And I would like to encourage people to catch on because it's a good way to learn things and I mean even though I had prior experience to Node.js integration not in the field but just on my own time uh, it was nice to you know stretch my stretch my skills again um, I did want to note quickly that there was issues with host IP there was a nasty um, print R <laughs> stuck in here so when basically what it does is when the user logs in I forget where it was but when the user logs in they see this print R crap coming out on the screen I should probably submit a patch for that and in visualization um, was it the admin there was some form callback that was bad it had like reference it, there was a bad reference somewhere anyways so you might run into problems if you install this module and you notice something's not working quite right. It's probably either host IP or visualization module. They're both the most recent releases as of uh, February 27. All right, well, that's all I have, and I've gone over four minutes. Thank you, everyone, and hopefully I get it. Bye.